Hi everybody, James here, and I want to talk a little bit about how, even though you don't play Pokemon Go, you can still get a reward from it. There are a few things that I think that we often overlook from a security perspective when we're talking about application security, and some of that happens to come in the back side of things after we've released the application. And there's one piece of this that we're going to discuss that actually happens beforehand that we need to consider. There's been a lot of talk recently about the security concerns. I was actually on the local news station here in Jacksonville talking about some of the privacy and security concerns amongst Pokemon Go. I think that kind of distracts from some other areas that we need to think about. And there's three areas I want to consider. The first area is talking about the fake applications that are being released out there. The second area is talking about the scams that are coming along with this, which we've seen in other areas as well, but it's pretty prevalent here with the Pokemon Go release. And then finally, I want to discuss a little bit about some of the legal concerns and are you considering these during your application development and release cycles. So to start off talking about the fake apps, of course we're seeing lots of fake apps here. One of the reasons we're seeing fake apps, and mostly these are on Android devices, is that there was kind of a slow rollout uh, as far as a release goes, right? So we're not releasing to the entire world at once. It was released to a few countries and it's slowly being released out. So a lot of people are looking for ways to get a hold of it if it's not available to them yet. So that's one thing that actually leads to the ability to get these fake apps, right? And, and for scammers to understand why fake apps may be good for them, because people are looking for them, right? This is one of the hottest things going on right now is Pokemon Go. So if I can create an app and trick people to download mine, which may be malicious, maybe it's got a root kit, you know, it's doing bad things with our application, then obviously I'm gonna do that. And one of the things I've found over the years is, you know, rarely in the application security space are we talking about the risk of the fake applications once we release. You know, we talk about doing secure SDLC and we talk about all these different security features as we're building an app, but rarely are we talking about in our incident response plans, hey, is there anything we can do about this? It, this may be popular, people are gonna create fake apps. So how are we communicating with our users to let them know where to get the official app, what is the official app, and to be cautious of these other apps that may pop up that aren't legit. Now, unfortunately, it can be pretty difficult. Uh, I don't think there's an easy solution there, but it's something we need to think about. I don't think we can, you know, just do cease and desist orders for everything or take down orders uh, for everyone that pops up. I mean, I've seen articles talking about 200 plus Android APKs being available on third party sites that are malicious. So you're not gonna be able to stay on top of all of this. But there might be some other ways that we consider looking at this so that we, we can identify to our customers and let them know, hey, here's our official channel. This is where you get the app from. Uh, again, I don't think it's an easy solution, but I think it's something we need to start talking about. It's something I've not seen companies really talk about is addressing how do we deal if there's fake apps out there to let people know, here's our official stuff, don't download this other stuff that, that isn't ours and it could be malicious for you. Uh, we, we just gotta come up with a different way and, and start talking about it, have these discussions of how we can address this. I think the next step is to talk about all the scams that are coming out of this, whether it's phishing, vishing, smishing, right? Add your ishing, whatever you want. We need to consider how we can maybe get ahead of this curve. You know, again, this is something that happens after the fact. We've released an application now we need to start thinking about how can we address this. Uh, if it's really popular, popularity is a huge driver for the scams that come out. We see it around holidays, we see it around major events that occur, and apps like this, they could be apps like yours. They're very popular, they become prime targets for scams to come out after you. So how do we address this? How do we let people know? And I'll give you an example of one of the scams that we saw come out, and it was about you know, this is a free app. Well, they're putting a scam out there. It's an email scam saying that due to the overload of users using this, free isn't gonna cut it, basically. And now we have to start thinking about charging people, and I think in this one it was $12.99 a month uh, for you to continue using Access. And if you don't go to this website and pay your $12.99, then we're gonna freeze your account. Well, you know, this uses a lot of techniques that we use in, in social engineering attacks 
to try to trick people into falling for things, right? There's a sense of urgency that it's, hey, you have 24 hours or we're gonna cut off access to your account. In addition to that sense of urgency, something bad is gonna happen, right? They're gonna cut off access to your account. Maybe you've spent a lot of time going out and, and catching these items out there in the game and now you're gonna lose that. So you see they're taking these things and using that to build it up and people will start to think that this is legit. Uh, and you know, we've seen for a long time now rumors, you see posted on Facebook every once in a while, how Facebook is gonna start charging after a certain time, you know, and people being prepared for it. This is something we wanna think about. It may not be something we can directly fix as we're releasing our app, but it gives us some questions we can think about. Uh, for example, thinking about how are we gonna address this? Do customers have an easy way to get a hold of us? to ask these questions. What is our business model that we're actually using within our application? You know, is it a free app that will go to a pay app at some point? How would we convey that information to our users? How would we let them know that, hey, we're gonna start charging? You know, is it something that's gonna come out on the officially branded uh, you know, company website? Would it be out on news segments? How would we get that information out where people would feel more comfortable and believe it, uh, you know, and obviously we have to be able to stay on top of understanding the scams that are coming out about our company and about our apps. Uh, just like the fake apps, we need to understand this so that way we can help customers understand what is legit and what isn't legit. We can't catch it all, but if we can catch a few of these things and let them know, hey, here's some common scams that are coming out about our app, don't believe them, come here for the official word, that may help us reduce our risk. Again, this isn't risk directly at attacking us. Uh, while the scams may do that because they could grab credentials from users to get into the platform, it's still something we wanna make sure we're doing because we wanna protect our customers. Finally, I wanna talk a little bit on the legal side. Now this one switches from no longer we after release, this kind of before release, just during conception of an application. How are we involving the legal team when we start talking about the application, what's it gonna do? What's our business model? What are the repercussions that could hap happen out there? Uh, you know, what type of liability may we run into as this is out there? You know, there's lots of apps that use GPS, you know, I mean, lots of mapping apps. You know, I mean, look, I drive from New Hampshire to Florida, all, you know, all across the country, and I use my phone and I use the GPS apps that are available to give me directions and do all this stuff, right? Obviously, there's things that pop up a, you know, only passengers should use this, don't use this while you're driving. Uh, Pokemon Go has all kinds of other stuff as well to say, hey, you know, here's our terms of service. You shouldn't be doing this. You, sh you can't do this. We're not gonna be liable. Now, obviously that liability, you know, there's a gray area there and I'm not a lawyer, uh, you know, and that would be up to courts to decide, but we have to consider what it is that our app does how it affects human behavior, human nature. Because while maybe we're just producing a simple game or we're producing you know, this fun augmented reality that's out there, there's going to be real world events or occurrences that happen that may come back and, and be pointed towards us. So we wanna think about legality from the conception of the app. You know, is our business built to handle this type of legality or are we, are we set to respond to it? What type of plans do we have in place? We need to consider, you know, during threat modeling and risk analysis and, and attack trees, how does legal fit into this? What are some ways somebody could come at us, uh, you know, using our application to try to affect us or, or try to sue us? You know, I mean, again, this is here, it's to provide a service, it's to provide, you know, a product for people to use, hopefully enhance lives. But at the same time, there's always gonna be risk. And oftentimes we don't see legal having a good tie in to when we're talking about some of the requirements that we're gonna have or some of the business ideas. Yes, it's great, it's gonna make us money, but how much could it cost us in the end depending on what we're doing? So those are some of the things that, you know, I don't think we talk about as much as we should or as much as we could. Uh, but I want to raise those up, and I think Pokemon Go is a great platform to start those discussions, to have those internally. I don't think we have all the answers, but I think it's a good thing to start thinking about it, start talking about it internally, understand how you're doing things, and then see how we can progress. And if you've got comments on that, please share them back. 
uh, share them with me, share them with other people in the community. This is stuff that will help better us all. I appreciate you all listening to this, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot again for listening.